Hey guys, it's Chris. Today I want to talk to you about using schemas in SQL Server. Use these to group tables and store procedures together in ways to reuse your object names. Uh, schemas can also be used to limit which objects the user can access, but we're not going to cover that. Alright, so if you work with databases that contain a lot of tables, you might need to organize these tables so that all the customers are listed together and all the employee tables are listed together separately. And one way you can do that is, is using schemas. So, um, you know, additionally, you might also want to use a table named person that contains, you know, a related customer and then have, you know, um, a related table naming person that, that has columns related to an employee. And there's a lot of ways to do this, but one of the really nice ways to do it visually, just being able to look at your database or having other people that don't know anything about your database being new to the company or new to just looking at these objects, that they can already infer some things about it due to this nice organization. So, you know, one way you can do that is with underscores, and I'll show you that that might be good enough for you, but um, separating with DBO is, you know, really handy. So, now I'm gonna open up um, SSMS so you can follow along, uh, and we'll get right into it. Special thanks to my good friend, Mr. Benji Thomas, for giving me this great idea and the knowledge to build this video. Hope you're watching. All right, so here we go. As you can see, we're in my SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio, and I've got the Northwind database open. If you haven't heard of it, it's a free database that Microsoft gives out. Um, I've added this Chris test, but just ignore that one. And unfortunately, I can't zoom in this left side of the screen a whole lot, so I apologize to those mobile users, um, but I will zoom in any scripts that open on the right. So let's jump right in. So as we were saying, uh, DBO is the default schema. Um, in this case, there's another DBO, uh, that's a database owner, uh, but we're not going to talk about that. We're talking about schemas in this uh, video. So DBO is the default schema. Uh, and before I create a new schema, I'm going to show you um, what I was talking about earlier with the underscores. So if I was to right click on customers and do script table as create to new query editor window, this is going to, gen this is going to generate a script that would recreate that table if we wanted it. And if I hit F5 on this, and in fact, I don't even have to, if I just hover over it, it says there's already an object named customers in the database. So if I was to hit F5, I'll get that error. There's already an object named customers in the database or database if you're from up north. <laughs> All right, so, so check this out. If I was to just do my customers, and before I hit F5 on this, just Let's change the primary key name because you can't have duplicate primary keys. And hit F5. And then I did your customers separated by an underscore. And we'll PK3 here. And then I refresh my tables. I'm now allowed to have my customers, your customers, and customers here. So you could separate. All right. So creating a scheme is actually incredibly easy. Check this out create schema, whatever you want to call it, my schema2, F5, command completed successfully, that simple. If you wanted to see where it went, I collapsed my north one here, uh, you can refresh it, right click, refresh, go to security, and then there's schemas right there, my schema2. You can go to properties on that schema, and you'll see the schema owner, DBO, permissions, extended properties. So it's all available right here. Let's go back to that create table script that we had. Uh, so if I was to do, say, go back to tables and go to, uh, what is it, uh, your customers, script tables, create to new query window editor. Here, I'm going to put, if I just put, just create table your customers, and I changed our primary key here, it's going to create dbo.yourCustomers. If it doesn't already exist, otherwise it's going to give you an error, because that's the default schema. If I want to create it in the new schema that we've created, I'm going to have to put my schema2 here. So I could do my schema2 dot, and that will work. So now I've got your customers in DBO, but I've also got it in your schema too, or my schema too. So if I refresh here on the tables, as you can see that logical separation I was talking about earlier, it's 
it's going to be alphabetic, alphabetically organized in this manner. So this might not seem like much right now, but if you have 10 employee related tables and you have 20 customer related tables, and there's a lot of overlapping names there, this is going to be super helpful in organization of those. All right. Now, what I was saying earlier with, you know, a customer, maybe having an employee and an employee, maybe having a customer, you know, you're still going to need foreign key relationships to keep those normalized and set up correctly. But having the DBO for separation um, of, of really what the parent is and how it should be organized and sorted within your editor is going to save you so much time while you're working on things. Uh, before I lose you, stay with me for a little bit longer. There's a little bit more you need to know about schemas. So let's talk about selecting data, and this will be fast. So if I do a select statement, which will generate that as well, because it's quick for videos, right? If I make a select statement, it automatically comes up with use the database that's up here at my top left. You can change that out if you want, or you can change it here. You don't really need to have it in both places when you're in SSMS, but it's good to leave this in here in case you take this query out of SSMS, which you're most likely going to do, like put it in a report or into an application, right? Anyways, so you'll notice if you do this way, it automatically pops up with dbo.customers. But if you're writing this query by yourself, most likely you're just going to say select from customers. In fact, you probably won't even have these square brackets and it's going to work just fine, right? You see that? Now, if you want to select from your custom schema, you're going to have to specifically put that here. My schema two dot your customers, right? If you just said your customers, yeah, and there was a your customers in DBO, it's always going to pick that DBO. It's always going to pick that DBO unless you specify your schema in the front. Just like that with a period. Okay. One last thing to show you how to drop a schema. So if you want to drop a schema, it's this simple. Drop schema, the name of the schema. My schema two. You notice it's case insensitive, but it failed. Why did it fail? It failed because there's an object in my schema, uh, in my schema two. You must get rid of the objects first. Then you start procedures, functions, views, tables, right? So let's go ahead and drop it. Uh, drop schema, oh, sorry, drop table, my schema two dot your underscore customers. Notice it's not case sensitive here. Now I can drop my schema two, and it's gone. So if I refresh this, it's gone. So that's it. No more time to waste on schemas. It's a really simple topic. Uh, just keep in mind, uh, you should always go ahead and create your own schemas if you find it helpful in organization. Don't feel like you have to only use the schemas available to you, and don't remove any of the system schemas because that could backfire on you. All right, uh, we'll talk to you later. Have a great day.